So let's first do the just to show what each tool does, because each tool then is going to affect that grid and how and the metal around it differently. And that's going to affect uh, and that's going to determine sort of what you want to use so that you do or don't affect metal near it, near where you're hitting. And direction is, for, you know, that's with the chisel direction. Uh, anyway, I'll show you here. So shaping mallets, one of the main ones, and you use that kind of first to get the basic pattern down. And you want to, at the beginning, you want to mash the metal with just brute force to where it's going to kind of end up later. And then the places that you're hitting that you're smashing down will come back uh, later. So, so you use a shaping mallet and you're going to hit say here and it's going to do a radius or a diameter or whatever word you want to use uh, to make an area this big a crater. And that's how it's affecting the metal. If you use a round hammer, it also does a circular pattern, but it does it with a smaller radius. Oops. Oh, that looks similar, but it, it is smaller. Let me start over. And actually what you just did is something that took me a while to realize. When you discard off the anvil, you're not wasting the metal. Right, good point. So you can discard any time and you get all the metal back. So you'll... Okay, so there's a shaping mallet. Here's a round hammer. They look similar in size, but the round hammer is a little bit smaller. Then you have the ball peen hammer. That's the smallest for detail work. And that's gonna do even a smaller radius. So those are the three. Now what I generally use is gonna be the shaping mallet and the ball peen hammer. Uh, but the round hammer has its uses sometimes. Then the other thing is force. So these are all force nine. So force nine is going to mash the metal like all the way down and just push it right around wherever. So this is the, the shaping mallet on like force nine. So so if you use, for example, shaping mallet force nine, and you use shaping mallet force four, and the, sh the force is from one through nine. Nine is the most severe. Four would be like that. And then you can even go down to one, which you won't even be able to see, barely. But it's used for very fine detail work at the end to get just little extra points out of places. So there's one. So you, if you were watching it, you can see it go down a little, but you can't really even see it after the fact like you came with the nine. So the force is from one to nine, that's for all tools. So I showed you those three tools. Now we'll look at the chisel. The chisel you need in that, it works only uh, one direction and it's really wide, hence the name wide chisel. So you do chisel, force nine. So it's gonna, it actually only put force down this way and it moves metal though only front and back all the others do it in a circular pattern to the sides so Donner, what whose pig is that all right doesn't matter no problem so can we get rid of the pig please so the uh Whose pig is that? Anyway. So the chisel moves metal. Only in Egypt. Oh, Donner can't hear. I'm hearing you fine for what it's worth, Jeff. Wait. No, it was just for a while there. All of a sudden you just got really quiet and I'm like, hello? Nobody oh, heard okay. me. Sorry okay. about that. No, that's okay. I was just, I was just saying who 
Is that your pig? No, that's Al's. Oh. Okay. Um, so you can see here the chisel. What it does is it pushes metal only front and back. So this goes bump goes up here and up here, but not to the sides at all. But it also is affects a wide area. So the chisel is going to be very useful for certain things, like for example, uh, sharpening the front of a blade or of a hatchet or a cart blade. So you're going to hit that down, and you can see. What this was that? This would be a good time to uh, talk about the rotation. Uh, because that oh, the yeah, I forgot. Place. Okay, you're right. Thank you. Okay, so you want to, the best way to view this, in my opinion, is to be able to have the center of the, uh, the center of the anvil uh, be the center of your viewing when you're spinning around. To do that, you need to stand when the anvil is oriented the way I have it, because you can do it this way, you can do it. 90 degrees uh, is to stand here. If you stand over here, you're gonna, you, it's gonna rotate the wrong way and you can't really see stuff. So you stand here for this one and you can rotate around. And I use F8 view because F7 is gonna be too narrow. You can't see and it's too far away. F6 is a little better, but still not gonna get you where you need to be. F8 seems, you're but, on the um you're on the south end right of the anvil yeah and okay. i mean right. but other people and, don't I mean, know just, that so yeah I, I guess so i don't know i mean i'm just saying you you just get where you get where you need to be so when you're spinning around because the anvils are oriented both ways so if you got it oriented 90 degrees you're going to end up standing like here and it'll spin around the same thing all the way around but i like standing I orient them this way so that I stand here. But yeah, I this one is. I think it's actually on the south end. To orient them this way. Otherwise, your chisel is a lot less useful. The chisel, actually, the chisel turns with the ninety degrees. Oh, it does. Yeah, but standing over here, to me, is yeah. I don't. It, it'll affect the piece the same way no matter which way the orientation is um so anyway that's also why you can't use a chisel on this thing sharp edge blade anywhere because everything's angled where you want to hit it except this edge but you don't want to chisel there because it's supposed to be higher. So anyway, no no use at all for a chisel on like a sharp edge blade because of the angles. Anyway, the uh, so I stand here to make sure and to make sure it goes smoothly around. There is a blacksmith camera on anvil view that you can use. And that automatically does it, but I don't like to use it because it has, for me, it's a little bit too shallow of a view, so I don't use it, but it is there if someone to make it easy and you can stand anywhere, but it stays on the anvil so that it, may, it might be an easy way to, to just sort of start, but I prefer to use the F8. So, so the chisel then, um, oh, and you can see, uh, with the grid, when you hit it down like here, so it's just gonna go this way and push metal that way. You can see the edge, whoops. You can see the edge. So it goes over this, one, two triangles, and then affects up to the third here. So that's how far that's gonna go. If I use a shaping mallet, it goes over one. And up. So anyway, you can just see the wide chisel goes gives you a, a, the extra thing, extra uh, grid over farther reach. The shaping mallet though pushed metal all this way. The chisel only pushed it straight back. So anyway, we'll get to that later. About so, what you want to do is use. here's our goal view and we're gonna want to 
use the goal view a lot to compare and see where we need to move metal, uh, see where there's imperfections, see where we need to, to knock things down. It also helps inform what force you want to use. So you can see the bump. Like if you know there's a bump there, but if you're using the goal view a lot, you'll be able to see um, you know, how small or large it is and gauge with practice how much force you want to use. So you start with nine. People have different starts. You can start however you want. But in general, you want to get this area back here, these back corners down to start. And then you want to get the front down to start. And you want to get the middle up. So again, people do it, uh, you know, however they want. I, there's a video on YouTube by a guy named Sulman who, I don't know if he still plays or not, but not much if he does, but there's a video on YouTube where he uses this, I use, I stole the start from him. And I use it because that's how I learned to do it from watching his video. So his start is to go out here. So I think it's one, two, probably three things out, three uh, triangles out, but I start here and do it the way he does it. See, and I messed it up already, but that's okay. Basically, I start going straight down this line. And this line right here, these, these lines, these angles are on the triangles. So everything's a triangle. Here is one at the side of one triangle. It goes here and here. And then there's just, it's all triangles here. So I'm going to go straight down to here and do that. And then I just hit so that you can see where it affected the area here, but not the corner. I hit it there, or down, and do the same thing on the opposite side. The thing with the hatchet, you do want to try your best to keep it symmetrical. Sorry, I was just... You basically want to sort of go around, and these are the specific places I hit, but you sort of want to go around the horn and get that front area down. Like I said, you want to have the back corners and the front. These sides here that are going to be higher will come back later. So right now you just do a very basic pattern around. This is all shaping mallet nine, force nine, the most, the heaviest force to get the metal moved the most to where it needs to be. Okay, so now we look at the goal at these huge peaks and see even hitting the front then brought this back right here. It also brought back these corner, corners up way too high. We'll get to them in a minute. So you have this middle here, you have these peaks. You have this front blade edge. So basically what I do is knock this down a bit. Actually a lot with nine. I probably hit it a little too hard, but that's okay. The center's not as high up, so I hit maybe four seven to just get that down and sort of even it up. So you can see now it's sort of you're getting an even thing, even a blade edge across, starting to anyway. The top, what you want to with okay, number one with the hatchet, you want to always work from the outside in because if you do the inside first, when you don't have to, um, the metal always works its way to the outside and it stops there. I mean, it stops at the edge, so it's gonna bulge out. So you wanna work best you can. So now you want to uh, sort of start working and get smoothing this out, get the peaks down. Here's the goal view. So now, the thing with the member with the shaping mallet that sends the metal the most direction the, the farthest away from where you hit the round hammer does it less the ball peen even less um on these peaks here i'm gonna use round hammer to try to keep the metal closer because this these parts here are down so i'm gonna use round hammer on like four six i found works pretty good so i do that and that now this is high, this is high. So we're going to get this down, and then we're going to go back to these corners in just a minute. But for now, when it, now I want to get this down. But that's if I use a four six on that, it's going to smash it too low. So maybe go to a four four. 
Yeah, that's better. So. Okay. So now you can see there's this big divot here. Goal view is to have it up. It'll fill in as we go because we're going to work these back corners and move the metal this this way move towards the center and towards the front. So now I'm going to use shaping mount force nine because this corner has to be all the way down. So no reason not to use the nine and just smash smash it. I go now. Here's one edge then of a of a grid uh, of a triangle. So I'm going to use it one more time. And do the same thing on the other side. All right, this is bugging me. This one right here. So I usually just don't go here right now, but I'm going to do it because when you shape him out at force five, hit this down. Okay. Back to here. And now we want to sort of work the middle here and get this in order best we can for now. And then what we're going to do is keep going from these back corners and the top to the front blade edge. And we're going to go back and forth. The the uh, hold on a second. All right. So we're at 27 out of 180 blows. You can hit Q to check the quality and to check how many hits you've made and how many you have left because you want to be cognizant of that particularly when you get to the end to make sure that you don't the worst thing is you get to the very end and then you didn't sharpen it with like two hits and it affects the quality a lot so anyway we're at 6317 with 27 hits out of 180. Uh, another thing is that's affected by the blacksmithing skill uh, or specialization where you do get extra hits for the touch of Pata. So 27 hits probably is more like, I'd probably hit it more like 35 hits, but some of them just don't register, which is the advantage to using the, the Smith specialization. But anyway, um, so we're going to now try to get this part in shape in order. So I'll use like a shaping mount force, maybe six here. Get this down. And then I'm going to switch to maybe force four because we don't want to be smashing this down too much. And again, I'm going to use the goal view to sort of gauge what I'm doing here. Too much force if I can help it. Sometimes you just do anyway. I'm going to go force four. All these hits are also going to get the metal sort of back into this center. But it's going to take a while. So that's why I need to just sort of be patient. Yeah, now I'm using force three because I want to hit this down, but I don't want to hit it too hard. And again, I'm just going to use the gold view to keep aging what I'm doing. Okay. So, better. We're not there because we can't be yet. So, we're going to switch down to the front and work on getting this, getting this blade edge the right slope. There's the ideal slope and the ideal edge, which is just above flush. It's not flush, but it's just above flush. And we'll get to that in a minute with the chisel, which is how you sharpen this front edge. So now we have bulges, you can see, all along, right along this line here. So I'm going to use shaping mallet and start over at the edges. Well, and actually, before I do that, I'm going to knock down this this corner right here because these become a problem later. But I'm just going to do that real quick. So we do shape him out at force four. We don't want to hit this down too much. If we used a nine, it would smash a giant hole in it, and that's not what we want. 
only use a four, three, four, sometimes a five. It just depends on how big the bubble is. Um, and you sort of get used to, you know, what it should be based on, um, you know, from when you practice. So a three there, now use a three there, probably a four now. Now, up here, there's this. I'm going to use a ball peen up here. Well, I'll use a shaping mallet. Three, get it down. Yes. This is going to move the metal back here. Back here. And this is going to go up. But we don't worry about that right now. And so that's why we're doing the back and forth. we got a divot here. That's probably going to be there till the end. I probably could have used a force eight shaping mallet before when I used a nine, but so be it. Now I'm going to go again, work from the outside in. I'm going to go over to this side. I'm going to use a four here. Knock this down. It might be good to also touch on the fact that when you're working your slopes, uh, the hits don't always right. fly right where you click. Okay. okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Good point. So you got that grid pattern and you have the effect that the, the, the radius of the hit for the shaping mallet and the round hammer and the ball peen. When you're hitting on something, ball peen, when you're hitting on a spot, it's going to affect the highest spot that's within that radius. So I'm, I'm down here when I'm down here, when I'm doing the shaping mallet and it's knocking it down up here because it's higher up and the shaping mallet is going over three, three triangles or whatever it is. So look here, here's an example. Here's a good, here's a bump right here. So I'm going to hit down here to make this bump go down. I'm going to use a shaping mallet force four. So I'll do a three and it'll, I'm going to hit down here though. And then it makes it go down though where I want it. If I were to hit up here, it would knock this down up here because it's higher up. Good, very good point, Claude. Thank you. So you want to be cognizant with, particularly with the hatchet, you have steep slopes, um, but you always want to keep that in mind that you want to hit below where the, uh, particularly on a steep slope, uh, where you want it affected. So, oops. Okay, so for example, right, all right, also, one thing on the, that's important is you always, is when you hit down this front hatchet blade edge, obviously it's really high right now and it's not sharp, that's the goal. When you hit that down with the chisel, the chisel is going to make the uh, metal go straight back, not to the sides. It's straight back. So it's going to raise up whatever's here behind it. One, uh, one, maybe even two uh, uh, grids lower. So right here, this you can see right here where my mouse is. That's higher than goal. And you want to even have it lower than right here. It's lower than goal. So when I hit the chisel, it's going to fill it in and make it about right. So you want to lower the shaping mallet because if I hit right on the blade edge with shaping mallet or, or just a little in, it's going to lower this, this line. So there, so I'm going to lower that. So now you can see the whole thing, and I'm just going to fix up a little. The whole thing, when you hit it, is a little lower on that line, one line in the back. So now I'll sharpen and you'll see how it comes back. So you get it with sharpening. I mean, you can use, if you use nine, it smashes it all the way down. But the goal view isn't having it smashed all the way. It's just above all the way down. So chisel nine would smash it flat. And actually you can do that. Sometimes I just do it because I know it's going to come back and I got to sharpen it later. But uh, I'm going to start with a three. Got it. To show you just sort of how I do it. Here's a three, and it'll even it up. Then two. And one.
Now we're 8457 quality with 66 hits. And now you can see when I hit that, what it did is it puffed up the back here. So what I'm going to do before I go back to the back corners again, just knock this down a bit, get it sort of in shape. Again, I'm going to hit down below where I want it to affect. I'm going just across. Okay, now I'm going to probably go to force two, and like that three was a little too hard. Not a big deal. And even down here to get it down, put that down. All right. And I'll just sharpen again for, for the heck of it, just to see what we got. All right, 86, 83. So anyway, now we go back here and do the back corners again, the center, and get it the best you can. And then it's going to affect the front again. And then we're going to go back to the front. And then what we're going to do is, as we go, we're going to lower the force more and more because the bumps are going to get smaller and smaller, the imperfections. These are all force three. Okay, so right here, we still have this big divot. There's a high spot right here along it. And we want the metal to move not very far. So I'm going to use a ball pin here because it'll fill in. It won't go very far. So here's a ball pin, say force two. We'll call it three. Maybe a two because it's gonna. I don't want to do it so much. And then also on this edge, it'll bring it down. Now, the one. Um, the one secret, I guess I would say secret, that when someone showed me, I didn't come up with any of this, that someone showed me for hatchets is critical. You use a chisel. It's the only place you use a chisel in the back. Right here. You need to get this slope here and on the other side here. You can't get it down by using a shaping mallet or you knock down what's in front of it too much because of the radius. So you use a shaping mallet because it only goes side to side and pushes the metal forward, but doesn't uh, pushes the metal forward, but and doesn't get down. So I'm going to show you chisel three, hit it on the corner. One, I'm going to hit it again. And then you hit it one in. And this is, I use force three, but it depends on how um, how much this is up. Sometimes, like this one over here is real high. I might use a force four, but four, four is significantly more than three. So I'm going to use a force three here. There. Now that slope is about just right. You can't get that, and it didn't knock this stuff down in front of it. That is one of the keys to getting really high quality hatches. If you don't know how to do that, I could never get to a 9K before someone showed me that. I could get to about 8,900. So same thing on the other side. I use a three anyway. I don't, I don't want to overdo it. So use a three. Yeah, not enough. I'll use it again. There, just about right. Now what it does is it pushes all the metal forward. So it makes all this up here go up. And so I just immediately going to use a shaping mallet, knock it back down. Again, I'm going to go below where I want to be affected. Same thing on the other side. I'm using force three. I don't want to overdo it. So we're at 89.65 now. Not bad. With 100 hits. Or a little more because I have the blacksmithing skill. I'm not sure how many exactly, but almost got a 9K. And now we're just going to. Okay. So now you have C bumps here, 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 here. 
use a shaping mallet force too. You do want to use a shaping mallet a lot. Um, but now I can go down to a force two to make sure we don't overdo it. And we still got the divot. We may end up that that thing stays there. All right, so we got a 90-40. So far, so good. Now what we want to do is just uh, keep tweaking um, back and forth between the front blade edge back here. If you have another thing is if you have divots, or the best thing with these or any other thing is if you have a, a depressed area and you have a high area near it, look for those. Because if you hit the high area, particularly like with a ball peen, it's going to fill in the little area and you get double points for bringing the top one, the higher point down and filling in the little, the divot. So we come back around to the front and you can see lots of high points now. So lots that we can still do to get extra points. I'm going to use say force three. There's some big bump here, but I don't want to overdo it. So I'm, and we got lots of hits left. So we use a force three. And I keep just keep using the goal view to be able to see what we're doing. Okay. Now I'm going to go to maybe a two. These other bumps, these are pretty small. So we just keep work these bumps, and you can see that the front blade edge then is take is going higher. So we're going to end up sharpening that again here pretty soon. And that's why you want to keep track of your hits. The last thing you want to do is keep hitting and then you uh, have this left because this is the easiest thing to fix of anything. All you use is a chisel and put it on force, you know, two or one and you rack the points up and I'll show you. So it's at 9106 now. Let's put on a chisel for a two. Say I forgot this and I got the 180, I'd be at a 9106. But if we do this, do there, force two, now force one. Get this down, 9186. And sometimes it'll jump way more than that, like if it's really unsharp. So make sure you always check your points, I mean your hits, to make sure you have a little, little bit left. Make sure you sharpen it. Now we got extra bumps from sharpening. Put that down again, these down again. And now I'm on force two. We really don't want to overdo it because you can't really get it back now because there isn't a lot of metal in other places to move around. Even force one. And I'm still using shaping now just because it, it tends to then be smoother across. All right. Let me sharpen it one more time right here just to see what we got. 92.12. Now we did that. That's as good as we're going to get it for now without using shaping out like one. But it, that way it hits because you're going to, it's going to, you have to do the back again and it's going to make it pop up here again. So there's no point in wasting the hits to get it super perfect. So now you can see we have these came up again. So now we're going to use shaping mallet two. Get it down. Use the goal view a lot, every time, basically. Compare so we don't overdo it. We got this divot. Sometimes it gets, it goes away. Sometimes it doesn't. This time it did not, but that's okay. That wasn't there though. It'd be like probably ninety four or something, but pretty good deal. Okay, so now you can see these came up. This came up again. So we're going to use the chisel again. Also, on the back corners, I use a ball peen to, so it doesn't affect the metal. Like if you just want to get this corner down, so I'm going to use a ball peen five. It doesn't have to be a five. Just anything will get it down and go in. As you can see, it didn't affect the metal out here that much. It's all same thing here. 
Down. Now, this part, I need the chisel again. I'll do a force two. And that's the only thing that'll get this down without affecting the metal in front of it. If I use a shaping mallet, it's going to knock this down and knock this down, and you get it, it, it's a detriment, not a benefit. So I'm going to use a shaping mallet force two because it's not that high. Pretty good. 9288. And now you can see there's still. I'm going to go to shit. Use it on this side too. There we go. Now we're going to go to shaping mallet, basically two and one, and then for small imperfections, ball peen hammer one and two. I love this big divot. There's nothing we can do about that now because the metal's been moved around. So shaping mallet two. Again. And we're just going to keep alternating these very the, the tools to just knock down what we need to, how we need to, until we run out of hits. 93.53. Like I said, on these edges, this edge right here, you want to use a ball peen. Right now, real small force. And just chisel again because that may just come up. So this whole part is coming up. There's not much we can do about that. This side's not doing it. So I must have hit in the middle over here a little more and it bulged this up, but we're getting to where we're not really gonna be able to do a whole lot. Um, which is why, like say you're using metal blue or something. Oh, and that's the other thing. Um, when you use different, uh, the different metals get you different number of hits. So I used iron, it's 180 hits. Um, and you can see down here when I hit, when I hit Q for quality it shows you the quality and I'm at 159 out of 180 hits so you get 180 and that's it before the piece becomes too fragile if you use steel you get 220 hits if you use uh, there's a whole bunch of others thos metal water metal I mean there's a whole list it's on the wiki uh, the best is octex at 300 hits but octex is way too expensive to use for a hatchet the, the neck and you can't reheat it when you're making alloys the next the best that you can reheat is metal blue and you get one, uh, 280 hits. So if you want a lot of hits, use a higher alloy. But um, like now, it doesn't matter if I have iron or metal blue. I mean, if I had steel 220, maybe I get enough hits that I can tweak it and get a few more points. But at a certain point, there's not really that much more you can do. Um, so. I'm going to go down to the lowest force possible and just until you get done. Force one. I'm going to keep track because 170. I, the last thing I want to do again. Let's go up here and make sure this thing's sharp. And right now it needs a little because that's going to be the thing you don't want to miss because it's so easy to fix. Now I'm going to use ball peen, I think. Just any high points, uh, small, small high points. Yeah, Here's where you get focused, and I don't want, and I don't want to miss the, the last sharpening. So. Good place to pick up a couple extra points. Also, at the near the end here is ball peen on these corners. So they're going to be up just a little, but knocking them down will help. Shaping mallet, four hits left. But you can see, even just doing that, knocked up these big bubbles up here. I'm going to do force two on that. It actually, could be a three, probably. Up. 
two on these. And went T, and there I got the 179, and I didn't sharpen it. Did the same thing I just told everyone not to do. Ah. That's it. So, see, I should have left two hits to sharpen. I would have gotten a bunch of points, more points, but not too bad. So, 94.39. Um, the advantages, uh, the, the bonuses you can get are... You can do art tests. Every art test that you complete, except for some reason, Dancing Waters that I've seen, get to you a few extra points. Um, I've only done one or, I think, two art tests. But anyway, you, you can get extra points on the anvil um, with art tests. That does not apply to the glory hole. You can use cheese or East cheese. That is 100 extra, 100 extra points plus 25 points for each potency level. So, uh, potency level one or each will give you 125 points extra. Uh, potency 10 will give you 350 points extra on the anvil and the glory hole. That affects the glory hole also. So, it's a good bonus if you want to get a Reese cheese to help you out to, to get the quality higher. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay. The same thing last time. There, I got 23 extra points. I think I have two art tests, so it gave me 23 extra points. And uh, so it's a 94, 62. All right, well, if no one has any questions, thanks a lot for tuning in. Try to do, I'm gonna do an advanced blacksmithing class, but um, soon, but I'll have to figure out, figure out when and how. And there we'll do, skip the basics and do probably another spring because I blew through the one last time and probably was a little helpful, but not all that much. Uh, so anyway, thank you all.